what must I do to be saved? You know, Jesus, we know, you know that we've sinned. We know that God will punish sin. We know what God did about sin, that God came to be a man, to die on the cross for our sin. But then we get to the question, well, Jesus did all this for us, but what must I do to be saved? What do I actually have to do to take part in that salvation that Jesus has paid for? Well, you know, lucky we, uh, we don't have to guess. We don't have to guess because the Bible actually has that question and has the answer in the Bible. So it's not something that we really need to dispute, but just find out from God what is the answer to that question. And we, we'll start reading here in uh, Acts 16.22, just so you can get the context of what is happening here. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates, the judges, rent off their clothes. So they tore, tore their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. So this is Paul and Silas. They had just cast the devil out of this lady, and they were upset with them because people were making money off this demon-possessed lady. And now they're being thrown into jail. Who, the jailer, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. So now they're not only just in a jail cell, but they're in a jail cell and, and unable to move, held fast in the stocks. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loose. So they're in this jail cell, they're praying, they're singing praises to God and a miracle happens where an earthquake occurs and, and the doors of the jail open and everyone's uh, shackles all fall off. 27, and the keeper of the prison, awaking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. Now why did the prisoner... Why did the jailer want to kill himself? Well, what, what I understand, back in those days, if you were the jailer and somebody was to escape jail, it would be your life for theirs. So he's about to commit suicide. Verse 28, But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he, the jailer, called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? The question that we're wondering about. What must I do to be saved? Here's the answer. And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. Now generally we stop there, but have you always wondered like, why it says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house? And it doesn't mean that if you get saved, then automatically your family is get saved. Because they, remember the context of this is he's talking to a jailer, saying, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. And if you continue to read, and they spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house. So they then went and preached the gospel to the people in his home. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and was baptized, he and all his straightway. And when he had brought them into his house, he set meat before them and rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. So that's why it says there in Acts, 31, Acts 16, 31, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved, talking to the jailer and thy house. But we see there the answer to the question, what must I do to be saved? It's believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. So we don't have to guess what the answer is. We know what the answer is. Now we just need to understand what that answer means. So, you know, what does it mean? What does it mean to believe? Because if you were to talk to some people, believe means, or well, if you believe, you're willing to do works. Or if you talk to the Jehovah's Witnesses when they come to the door, they'll say, well, if you believe, you'll keep the commandments. So they're trying to change what this word believe means. But let's look at the Bible and look at a couple of passages. And the Bible will actually show us what the word believe means.